that sense that something is about to happen, or you have just witnessed something amazing. I just had one of those moments. You see, that's what happens. That's what happened at this event that Peter spoke within. <coughs> Let this be known to you, he said. And he talked about the reality that all too often we crucify the Messiah by intent. Let this be known to you, he said. And he talked about what had happened. Not in a theoretical way, not in a way that could be debated. You know, there was no need to form a committee. None of that. No legislation needed to be drafted. He simply reminded them what had happened. That they were witnesses to That was enough. Because in that moment, they were cut to the heart. Have you ever been cut to the heart? Has something ever happened to you or been said to you that stripped away all the excuses, all the, the barriers, all the gunk with which life happens in? In that moment of witnessing to reality, the community was transformed. And they said, what should we do? Because if you're cut to the heart, if reality shakens you, if your world is turned upside down, you have two choices. You can try to turn it back the other way and make it like it was, which frankly is what got you in the first place, or you can do something with it. Well, these folks, and in this text it says over, over 3,000, and sometimes when the Bible uses those big numbers, those are just creative. It doesn't have to mean, you know, someone took a list. Yeah, number 733. <laughs> There's a lot of people. And as one they said, what should we do? Okay, now that your world has been changed, now that you've recognized that your world has been changed, here's what you do. You accept the, this new reality. You accept the power of the one who did the transformation. You do the things that he said to do. Our Lord said, do this in remembrance of me. That's why we do it. It's not a memorial, it's not a sad event. It's a celebration of what he did for us and within us. The reason we do baptism is because he said to do it. Because he himself had it done to him. And if it's good enough for our Messiah, it's good enough for us. And they did it. They didn't just talk about doing it. They didn't just, ah, okay, I've been to church. Now I can go back to the, my life. Their lives were changed once and for all. Do you get that kind of vibe? And maybe that's an old word. I don't know if people would use that word anymore, vibe. It's coming back. It, it, it can start here. Look <laughs> at that vibe that sometimes the Bible was written 
with you in mind, that somehow, a couple thousand years ago, somebody picked up a quill, dipped it in some ink, and thought, hmm, I'll write this to Fred. Or maybe there's a carol somewhere in the future that needs to hear this. Or maybe, maybe the person just left it blank for you to write your own name in. That's kind of what's happening here. The apostles, the eleven who remain, came to a place of worship. Came to a place where people had come in with one expectation. And they left different. Oh, it was the same door. They were probably wearing the same clothes. But when they walked out into the streets of Jerusalem that day, they were different. And oh, what a difference they have made. Because when you read this passage, I want you to think about what had happened just before that. And in a few weeks, we'll get really into it. It was the baptism of the Holy Spirit when the church came into being. On this Sunday also, many churches around the world will be hearing about the Emmaus walk. Those seven miles to Jerusalem and this village, which historians are still trying to figure out where exactly it was. It, you know, it just occurred to me just now that the men's walk to Emmaus is ending today. I mean, you want to talk about a cool experience? How about having the walk to Emmaus scripture read at your walk to Emmaus? That's pretty cool. The thing that happens at a walk, or at a five-day academy, or at Camp on the Border, or Flathead Lake, is that you go in Maybe you're thinking, okay, this is going to happen. This is what's going to happen to me. But if you are truly present at those experiences, your life has to change. If you are truly present in this experience, you cannot leave this building the same way you came in. Because the apostles tell us based on their own experience. Listen. Let this be known. It really happened. That God came and dwelt among us. Not to spy on us. Not to check us out, make sure that we had the right things in our billfolds or tucked away in our purses. Not to see if your house was dusted, or your lawn mowed, or you were reading the correct version of scripture. It happened. Let this be known to you, the apostle said. But the question this morning is, do you know it? The last couple of weeks, we've welcomed new, new members into our fellowship. And you heard it said, and, and I do a little, what do they call it, sidebar. I apologize again for the glitches on Easter Sunday. You know, my bad. <laughs> I am this close to perfection, but I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I've already achieved humbleness, so that's... <laughs> but 
Let this be known to you. It is the way it happened. When we stood before the congregation, whether in the last couple of weeks or whenever you joined a local congregation, and you made vows, and you made promises before God and the community to live your life a certain way, and in our tradition, the congregation also reaffirms their own vows and their own commitment to live life differently. Now, why do you think we do that? Anybody? This is participatory religion. Christianity is not a spectator sport. So can anyone tell me, why do you think we do this ritual? I mean, can't they just send in their membership dues and keep their little card for their wallet? Why do you think we do this? Say that again? Remember your baptism. Okay. I remember getting wet. Hmm. Anything else? It's an affirmation. Okay. Because it should be something that changes your life. It should be something that changes your life. Continually. Peter stood before the assembly that day and said, let this be known to you. And they responded in mass. Not because their neighbor was doing it, they don't want to be the only one left out. Not because it was the thing to do. But because the word of God had penetrated into the very seat of their soul and they were changed and so when they went home that night and you know, they took their sandals off and you know shook their robes from the dust of the journey do you think they might have said when asked the question well did anything happen today? I wonder. When the folks were traveling to Emmaus, on that first Easter day, they had been witnesses to history. They had been there. They had done that. And yet when they were walking back, they were still weighed down with uncertainty. Still weighed down with, yes, this was great, but And it came that the Lord himself walked with them again. And again, explained to them the scriptures. Just as Peter was doing in this setting. And it was in the breaking of bread. And it happened to them countless times before. That he became known to them once and for all. Let this be known to you, that having accepted the reality of God's love, having committed yourself, I heard you last week, having committed yourselves to following with him, not just in the pages of a dusty old book, 
Not just because your mama or your grandma or your great grandma told you. Because it matters to you. And because it matters to you, it will matter in the lives of those with whom you come in contact this week. Don't let this day go by without remembering your baptism, without remembering the Lord, and without remembering the story. Remember, let this be known to you and to the world. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to follow in the great Thanksgiving with the yellow inserts.